we are here today to talk about our hair, which for some of us, or really all of us, it kind of really guided our lives or really had an impact in our everyday life in some point of our lives. So the first question that I'm gonna ask, um, can you all kind of explain or tell me your journey uh, with your hair? I know some of us may have went, had, I don't know, a relaxer at the age of whatever, and then we had the big child, went natural, maybe went back to relax. It might've been a whole ordeal. So kind of tell me, we're gonna start with you. Just kind of tell me like your journey uh, with your hair. Okay, so as far as I can remember, um, I was the press and curl girl up until maybe nine or 10. And then I stepped into a relaxer, I believe, couple years went through and I think leisure curls came out and so I had to try that so I transitioned over to a leisure curl that didn't last mm -hmm. too long and then I think I went relaxer from that point on mm -hmm. till 2017 and I did the big chop maybe a year or so before that I started transitioning but by 2017 I did the big chop and then I've been natural since. Wow it's real kind of Tell me your journey with your hair. Well, my journey begins with, my mother was the hairstylist of the neighborhood. So, <laughs> so I always um, had a press and comb. She pressed hair, so I always had a press and comb. There was always somebody in the house on the weekend getting their hair pressed. Like that was a normal to smell hair pressing throughout the house on the weekend. So she always did a lot of people's hair, but I was, so I got a press and comb until I turned about I don't know, 13, and Carla said a leisure curl. I got a jerry curl. <laughs> I got a jerry curl and um, went and got, it was tired of it because it was like messing up, you know, it was all the greasy stuff. The, the show is real. And um, so I got a relaxer and all my hair fell out. It was a professional relaxer too, but anyway, I got a relaxer and all my hair fell out. Or, you know, not all completely bald, but you know, patches here and there. So my mama said, you give me hair press from now on. So I went back to a press and comb. I wore a press and comb, oh my gosh, I was like 19 maybe before I actually, cause my mom could press hair and make it straight like a relaxer. So yeah, it was, it was I probably wore it until then and then, I don't know when I went natural. I, I tried to swim and when, I don't even remember what year it was, but you know, as a hairstylist, you do a little bit of everything, but yeah, I'm not sure when I went natural, but I'm, I'm loving it now, but then it was quite the trying <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. Yeah. What about you? Um, I will say like, my mom has taken care of my hair. Like I can't remember like sitting in between her legs and like her combing it out and tapping my hands because I got my hands in it. <laughs> um, I can say I've been natural my whole life. So like I get presses all the time. Sometimes I miss Terrell, but like other like the perms, no, wig, no. Um, I don't have like a problem with it, but I was not raised with, like I was raised with like everybody, my grandmother, my aunties, hands in my hair all the time. Oh, she can do these twists and these braids. So, um, yeah. Wow, wow. Mm. And you? I would say my similar is very similar to yours in terms of growing up with my family, taking care of my hair, a lot of pressing combs and a lot of braiding. But at a certain point in my life, I reluctantly got a perm against my mother's wishes. Um, and I was 12. <laughs> and uh, after that, um, so I did perm for quite some years after that. And I still did the braids and the pressing regardless of getting perms on top of it. And at a certain point, and I don't remember when I made that transition, but I decided no more because I, the center of my hair started falling off as well. Um, and then, so basically I just stopped with all the extra stuff, kept going with the braiding. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually I felt maybe about 10 years, I really stopped putting the braids in and I just started working with whatever products I found on the streets until I found Miss Terrell. <laughs> wow. Wow, so everybody's journey has been kind of different, kind of similar, but I noticed that all of you all right now are um, natural, which there was a point I feel like um, I had read like there was a point where everybody was getting 
uh, relaxers and all of that. Everybody wanted their hair straight because that was the thing to have your hair straight. And then it turned to let everybody go natural. So did y'all ever see a point where you're like seeing everybody with their hair straight, hair cute, perms all the time? You know, because getting a perm, it's like your hair straight all the time. You ain't got to worry about nothing. So did you ever see a point where you thought like you felt like that was in, that was the thing. And it was scary to even think about going natural. Whereas now it's kind of like, cool, like, Eric, you know, we natural, you know? Have y'all ever felt that way? Absolutely, yes. So I think growing up, the relaxer was just the, the, the it thing. You know, your hair was straight, whether you had it long, whether you had it short, because I went through a, a series of, of both you know, from the short Halle Berry styles, going from there and then, you know, letting it grow out or whatever. But I, I don't think during the time when I was doing relaxers as much, I don't think it was a, a thing to think about not having a relaxer because relaxers was just the thing for our ethnicity. You got a relaxer. I don't think the natural hair wave had come through like it is now. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. yeah, not at all. The natural wave was not there. Like, even for, like I said, I, I got it pressed, but my mm -hmm. press looked like a perm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I just always, it was always straight. It was never mm -hmm. like a thought or an option to have natural hair to wear my own curls. Never. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a matter of fact, we probably didn't even probably have many curls <laughs> then. It was just mainly, you know, you, you got it blown out and that was it. And, and it went straight to the press and comb. My mom was like, no, there was not going to be a natural movement in her house. But it wasn't even a thought. I don't think it was a thought to go. Wow. Do y'all remember, I guess, for me, there was a point where I did, um, I stopped getting relaxers, but although I wasn't getting relaxed anymore, I was still getting my hair like flat earned a lot. So it really wasn't, nobody really saw a difference in me because it was went from relaxers to getting a silk press. And then there was a point where I was like, I'm tired of doing that. Like, let me just, let me wear my hair curly one day. And I think it shocked everybody, you know? <laughs> Did y'all ever have that point where like you saw like maybe shock from wearing your hair naturally curly or you know, just how it was, did anybody? I don't think I necessarily got a shock. I think I got more of a shock when I went from I'm going straight to a full blown afro because I, I did, did that afro. for a little bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and, and then, then eventually I started wearing it more curly. curly. Uh -huh. so, so I, I think, think for me, I was more more on the bolder side of things and I was like, it's my hair and I'm just going to work with it. So mm -hmm. that's my journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have like that opposite effect. Like when people see this, they're like how you would when you see natural hair because like I always have like a puff or like a ponytail like that's all and so like when I get it straight and everybody's like that you know, it's like, <laughs> like well, so I I don't know mm -hmm. yeah though yeah. it's like that reaction where it's like oh okay and like everybody's like okay hair and I'm like oh yeah it'll be like this for maybe a couple of days and then I'm back to <laughs> the monstrosity up here but yeah wow um, let me look at this really quick because I did have a question about that. Um, so how important uh, do you all think our hair is to our culture? Because I feel like maybe in other cultures you don't really hear that no, this probably isn't a conversation to talk about hair. Like, you know, you think about it, it's just hair. But for us, it's such a big conversation. So how do you all think it impacts our culture as a whole? Mm -hmm. I think hair dates back to like literally slavery. Like mm -hmm. we, our hair goes a long way back. It's been important even back then. So whether it's, you know, or was saw negatively then versus I think sometimes now it's still even saw negatively, even though um, we would like to think we have arrived. I hate to say that as a word, but yeah, that we don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to worry about you know, our hair, it's not a big thing. But I mean, even then it was a big thing. Like it has been a big thing forever. Like it, our hair has been like movements basically. Cause you think about like even for the seventies and the sixties, hair change, our hair changed throughout those times and they were always dramatic. So even when natural came through in the seventies, late early six, late sixties, early seventies, like that was a movement. You were saying, hey, I'm black and I'm proud. That was a, a big thing to wear your hair natural at that time. So I think even 
like all through the years, our hair has always just been a big topic for Stay everyone. Mm -hmm. Stay in these. Yeah. It's like how we express ourselves, because like we have the clothes, but like our hair, especially black women, hair has to be kept every time. And if it's not kept, you get like feeling moody, like, oh my God, I feel like I'm unattractive. So like our hair is kind of like that, like Miss Terrell said, it's kind of like it's moved over time, but like, like she said with natural hair, like that is the thing. That's the only thing that separates from any other style that we can get as black women, like natural mm -hmm. hair is like that one where it's like, I have natural hair, but do I like it? So mm -hmm. when you see it on other people, it's beautiful, but mm -hmm. like for the ones that don't feel that way, I guess they kind of see it as like a handicap. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I have my natural hair, but they see it as like just skin, I guess, like it's just there. Mm -hmm. So hmm. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, have you, any of you all ever had um, seen where your the way you worn your hair has, um, I guess, impacted you neg negatively, like maybe in the workplace or at school or I don't know, just out and about? Have you like gotten feedback or somebody said something that's kind of like, you know, like, what? You know? I don't think my I don't think my hair is impacted me negatively, mm -hmm. but I've gotten strange comments. I think the versatility mm -hmm. of our hair, like, is a that huge is. distraction yes. for people, if, if you know, <laughs> for lack of a better word. That's the That's one. I word. think the thing <laughs> that, you know, they could see it straight one day, um, then it could be curly another day, mm -hmm. um, it could be braided the next day. And so I think it's more of a, a captivating thing. Mm -hmm. I've gotten the, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, your hair can do so many different things. You can do so many. And I think people come from a good place mm -hmm. when they're making comments like that, but they don't really take a step back to understand what they're really saying or how the person you're saying that to is impacted by mm -hmm. like what what do you mean mm -hmm. by that and so the conversations really just aren't had about that yeah. but it is like a, a shock mm -hmm. factor because of the versatility yeah. 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 Else? i think that is a good point that i think that's you said it better like the fact that it can be one way one day and the one day the next day it's like whoa like yeah. and then yeah whoa <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me see, let me look on here. Um, so, um, so black, uh, black hair has a deep history. It was a way to show our identity as black people. So we kind of talked about that earlier. Do you still think that that still lives today? Like there's a hairstyle for every occasion, every event that you go to, like there's like, you gotta, you know, like you said earlier, you gotta look good and looking good. Oh, has a lot to do with your hair. Do y'all still think that still lives like today? Absolutely. Yes. 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 So mm -hmm. I know this is everybody's memory. Easter Sunday. Oh my yes. goodness. Don't play no <laughs> games on Easter Sunday. We're going to have some bangs. <laughs> Our hair is going to be straight. Yes. Right? My little, little bangs were a big thing for me. I, I can remember getting in trouble a bunch for wanting these bangs <laughs> and having them curly. But yeah, Easter Sunday, yeah. that was a big event. Like you were going to be, yeah. Your mm -hmm. hair is going to be straight or if it's going to be, you know, whatever it is that you had, it was, it was a big deal to have. So, yeah, for every event, mm -hmm. there that's one of the things we're going to do is make sure, yeah. If definitely. nothing else gets done, hair gets done. Yes. <laughs> even yes. if you don't have makeup, you don't even have outfit yet. The hair has, the appointment has to be booked. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have to know that it's set in stone. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But like Mr. Terrell said about like Easter Sunday, like, I think straight hair is like what we see is like appropriate attire kind of when it comes to like hair because it's like kept mm -hmm. and it's tamed mm -hmm. so i guess like you were saying like when you go somewhere that is the acceptance mm -hmm. you know like i was telling miss terrell earlier today on my campus i rarely see natural hair and when people see my hair in like an afro like a puff they're like where is your wig like that's how they're looking at like where are your braids and i'm like you know, so I guess we kind of have made that like an acceptance thing. Like that is when you don't have your hair done, mm -hmm. when it's in its natural state and it's not kept, then it's like, you know, so. 
I think that was like the biggest adjustment for me personally is like you have in your mind that having your hair straight, having it like sleek looking like that looks good. And so although when you get your hair done in a natural state, that if your hair is done, it looks good, but it just takes so much because we were, I feel like, I don't want to say programmed, but programmed to think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were conditioned to believe that, like, you know, straight is the only way that we can wear it. And so it took a while for me to say, no, my hair also looks good when I wear it this way or when I wear it in braids. Because there was this a big discussion of you can only wear a brace in the summertime. Like, it's not a, it's not a look to wear on certain occasions, that was like a thing on social media. But anyways, no, so no, how no. do y'all feel that way? <laughs> <laughs> it is so crazy what is accepted and what is not. When you have like natural hair, it's considered beautiful. Everybody knows that it's beautiful, but it's not what we want because it's like, yeah, it's cute, but this over here, I like the way this feels, sleek hair. Mm -hmm. I like the way it looks. And so like, I don't know why you said programming. It is, pro it's it is brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it has us think that our hair in a natural state is ugly. It's not, because you see it all the time. When you take your wig off at night, you know, you see it. When you get in the shower, wash your hair, you see it. So it's kind of like skin, like I said, it's kind of like you just, it's there always. And so you don't mm -hmm. take it as like, as important and as beautiful as it is. So mm -hmm. like, when you see straighter hair, it's like, that's something different than what I already have. So. I guess. Or worse yet, I remember in looking at the magazines back in the day when you would look at the before picture with the afro out and then the after when their hair is sleek. Mm -hmm. I'm already programmed to think. And I remember making a post back in the day when I took out my braids and my hair was in a puff and mm -hmm. I was like, oh guys, I made my you know dream. I'm going to be the before picture. Mm -hmm. I said those things about wow. myself. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think she raises a, a great point with that, uh, what, what we saw. You know, although we personally probably had all personal references of what our natural hair would look like. Mm -hmm. But when you think about what society pushed in mm -hmm. front of us, we didn't have a lot of the the natural mm -hmm. hairstyles. Like I said, it, it's just somewhat becoming a, a real thing now mm -hmm. where people are unapologetic about mm -hmm. wearing their hair. But before that, we didn't see that what we saw was long hair that was flowing that was straight or it had you know um the big ringlet type curls and things like that and i think about even easter when we would get we called them what the shirley temple, shirley curls. temple curls you know and i'm like <laughs> so we didn't necessarily see what our hair could truly look like we didn't have that you didn't see it in the magazines mm -hmm. you know you didn't see it on tv and things like that so yeah. i mean to be honest probably just since george floyd are we seeing ourselves on tv in the magazine that i mean before yeah. before then like we weren't represented like our hair our yeah. natural curls were not represented on any any platform whether it was the news it was behind you know the scene on the front of magazines it was very rare and if there were someone with their natural hair they did not have my curls. Mm -hmm. They had um, long, flowy, mm -hmm. um, you know, Wave. silky, wavy mm -hmm. curls. Mm -hmm. Those were the curls were represented. And so it is nice to now mm -hmm. begin to see my curls, mm -hmm. my hair on the magazine, in the books. It's, it's nice to see that people are accepting those curls, that they want to see those curls. Or, yeah. I think that's interesting that you f say that because I think that's also a big thing. Although that I guess people started to show more natural hair, it wasn't the natural hair that a lot of us have. It was like you said, the big, nice, like put together, like sleek, still type of curls. My curls don't look like that, you know. Mine a little short, shrink up, you know, all that. So I think it's important that we start to see those curls like the smaller curls the kinkier curls you know those type of curls because that's what a lot of us see when we go wash our hair that's yeah. what mm -hmm. we see in the mirror the majority of us they're mm -hmm. they're not um everyone and i actually personally think that they have taken 4c and market it and use it basically against us like you know it's mm -hmm. it's a way to get you to buy your product like there's a whole 
line of four C. It's it's a marketing ploy, really, to towards us. Like it's it's almost negative marketing, but the industry probably doesn't see it that way. But it's like your hair is so bad. It's so four C. It's so t that you need these products. You got to have this because it's so bad. And I think that's even though we're our curls are being seen, I think they're they're still kind of adding a negative conversation to it so it's just you know it's kind of one of those things to me like it's even also though it. like on tv like you say about george floyd at first i didn't see like natural hairstyles on tv shows and movies now you see it so much but there's still stipulations to it it's mm -hmm. curls but it's the other cur it's not the coil kind of barely curly it's like Define curls and it's long and I like the representation I love it but also like in the stores like the aisles for us like it's this section and then right here is like perm products like mm. chemicals hair dyes and then it's the rest for everyone else and it's like you know so you're not inspired to take care of and love your natural hair when it's not marketed to you in your face on commercials TV, it's like, okay, here am I, here's the conditioner, here's the gels. You know, you don't see the um, the little things they have set up for it to get you to walk over there and buy it. It's like, you just go over there, grab your stuff and go. It's not like promoted to us properly. It's kind of like hair. It's not hair with the capital H. It's like <laughs> hair with the lowercase H. It's like <laughs> hair It's you know, pro basic products and things. And like me and Mr. Earl somebody earlier, like having access to those products and things that make you feel like my hair has potential. It can curl, it can go this way, it can mold this way and do this. And you won't see that because the products are not up front and for you to see they're hidden somewhere or they're not there at all, mm -hmm. or they're so expensive that you don't even want to even consider natural. You're like, I can go get a perm, a relaxer, you know, or I can just go get a wig, wear it for however long, you know, so. That is so, so true. true. That, that is, is so true. true. Um, let me look on I, I, The products on the aisle. When I, um, when right after George Floyd, Target, like they had a whole line mm -hmm. of, you know, natural hair products are, you know, for us, by us, you might, no, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> a lot there and if you are in Target today that owl is is been diminished quite a bit and so um, I think over time I, I hope we don't but I think that you know sometimes you worry that we won't get put back into the you need to just probably wear a wig uh, or just you need to probably just wear your hair straight type of uh, movement because mm -hmm. You know, it's, you just, I hope it's not a phase. I think that's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. I mm -hmm. hope it's not a phase. I hope that we're actually being seen for who we are. Yeah. And, and and it's not, you know, a, a, a phase. I had a lady who came in the other day who said, I want to relax her. I said, why? And she was like, I, I'm, I'm just tired of it. I'm over it. I said, well, let me teach you mm -hmm. how to do it so you can actually do it with ease. I said, you know, a lot of what we've learned on YouTube it's wrong. It's it's time consuming and it's wrong. Okay. I said, so let me teach you the professional way to do it so you can actually do it for yourself. And she said, well, you know, really, I think I just want it because I see relaxers on TikTok now. Everybody's going back to relaxer. I said, so mm -hmm. you making a hair decision mm -hmm. based on what you've seen <laughs> on TikTok. I'm like, <laughs> it's just First like to a professional. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. But it's, that's how we are. That's how we've always been. Like when you see, it's like one thing when a couple people do it, but when you see the vast majority of us are saying this is easier to maintain and this is what we need to do, mm -hmm. majority is going to migrate that way because everybody wants the easiest thing to do. But like Mr. Rose was saying, when you have a professional, you have someone teach you how to do it. It can be the easiest thing to do, and it's free. It's your hair. And it's like inexpensive, like me wearing mm -hmm. my natural hair, I don't spend nearly as much amount of money as like yeah. friends of mine that get their hair done <laughs> ever so many weeks. And I'm like, why? And you have it sitting right here, like, yeah. seriously? And then like, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, 
Miss Terrell has like done my hair. I don't clip my own ends. So like some things I think that we do need to go to a salon and get done professionally because like some things we think everything is DIY at home. <laughs> no, <laughs> like the box guys, I'm like, seriously, the box <laughs> guys, <laughs> cutting your own ends and hair, oh, like yeah. some things, and I can see why it can be discouraging when you're doing it yourself and it's coming out wrong and the results are wrong every time. You're thinking, okay, you know, have somebody else hold your head and do it and then it'll be just like wow and it's my hair like you'll feel so much different because you're like this is not anybody like at night it's not going to get hot and i got to snatch it off it's like my hair <laughs> and it's growing out of my <laughs> head and it just feels so much better i wish everybody could just like think about it like that like you'll just feel so much better when you look at it and it's like this is mine like this didn't cost 300 and some dollars then 500 for the install <laughs> it's, like, it's like this is close. Yes. <laughs> so we are not anti. No, no, we're not anti. The wings are good. We, we want, we want, They're we good. want everyone to come into agreement with what works for right. you. Yes. yes. You, if Who it's you a want relaxer, to see in the mirror, get yes. a relaxer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Definitely. we've had it all. You've heard it all yeah. here. Yeah. We've had <laughs> lose your curl. We've had it all. So we are not anti whatever no. yeah. we just want we want everyone to be comfortable mm -hmm. with whatever works for yes. you yes and it, it's just a grace for that the same way i would embrace you know someone else's straight hair if i decide to wear mine curly embrace that as well that's all we're saying yeah. definitely that's Absolutely. too that's, that's, that's a good Yes. A really good bring it back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm not dragging the wig. Yes. Yes. Just, you know, love the person, yes. like, yes. however you want to show up. Yes. yes. That you showing up is a big thing. Now, I know each of you all have different positions. You're a student, teacher, you work, you own this business, and you're an OBGYN. So you all, like, interact with a lot of people every day. So it, has there ever been a time, I guess, where you, even as a teacher, you see little girls all the time, and I know that sometimes hair can be a thing at school, especially, I don't know what grade you teach, but hair is a thing at school. So has there ever been a time, I guess, where you've had to like talk to a student or a student has come to you about her hair or his hair even? Absolutely. So I'm also a licensed cosmetologist. I just keep my license current. I don't practice <laughs> anymore. <laughs> However, Yes, so I taught sixth grade for 11 years, and that was a, that's a tough age because you're, you're a teenager, you're right in between. Mm -hmm. So, and kids can be cruel. Mm -hmm. And when you don't really know who you are, mm -hmm. you just kind of accept whatever. So one day, sixth grade, had a young lady, and her mom was old school, so she was the kid with the, the puffs or whatever. She still looked like a sixth grader, like an 11, 12 year old child, mm -hmm. versus her having uh, a sew in. Because mm -hmm. we see mm -hmm. that now, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. Especially I'm in junior high now, so we see it all. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother subject. <laughs> However, <laughs> um, I was so discouraged um, with the amount of students and the negative comments who actually looked like her male and mm. female mm -hmm. so at that time I think I was transitioning or something at the time mm -hmm. and so I had a unit a wig or whatever mm -hmm. and so I made it a point the next day to wear my hair natural mm -hmm. so she could mm -hmm. feel like somebody who looks like me identifies mm -hmm. with me and you should have seen just the representation alone mm -hmm. like everybody was cool and we just had a whole day we took pictures and we did everything and just the amount of confidence so representation matters oh, just yeah. showing mm -hmm. up when a kid or just anyone can identify and they feel like okay that's not so bad yeah. it's okay so absolutely yeah absolutely any of y'all have had that experience like just in your profession or anything where you know maybe somebody has come to you or said something to you about their hair I'm sure you have all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. I hear lots of stories. Lots of mm -hmm. the students and, you know, children not getting to be their selves. But I think probably my most disturbing story um, at one of the elementaries here, one of my clients came in and said the teacher actually told a little girl, you're having a bad hair day today, aren't you? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's really 
hard for a, a yes. that your teacher, the person who's supposed to love you, basically you think love you. Now she might not, and no, I'm just joking. But she, she has a big effect on you. Like mm -hmm. a teacher is that's a big thing. And so, yeah, I've heard I've heard lots of stories like that. But I've also heard good stories since mm -hmm. I've started helping people with their natural hair. Like I've had people to come in and say, Oh, my kids, they were so excited that my hair looked like theirs, and there was mm -hmm. you know, or my stu you know, just different people were excited mm -hmm. to see their cells see their own curls their own hair so mm -hmm. yeah i got lots of stories <laughs> i got lots of them but um one last thing i guess to kind of wrap it up um how important is i know we talked we're talking about representation how important do you all think representation is just for us um, in general for just being authentic and being yourselves and showing that that you can be yourselves where however you want to be how important is that um, just in general it's extremely important to to honestly be at this position where I am today honestly with my hair and how I feel I remember and I'm sure you remember when I sat <laughs> in your chair and then when my curls finally came out and I just started to cry you know because it was such a like life-changing moment for me because I'm over here every it's a it's a it's a tr full transition but it's a, a whole process what I used to do before before I met you in terms of washing my hair then I had to basically the twist out the putting it together taking it out it's a whole like night evening and sometimes it would be in the middle of the week because I just didn't feel good about myself mm -hmm. and now coming here it's a once a week wash my hair style it it's done I could honestly say I woke up like this every day <laughs> you know and it's straight out the door I have never had that kind of freedom so having representation is extremely it's so important because if you weren't here I wouldn't be here feeling as confident as I do today yeah, yeah. representation is everything mm -hmm. and yeah. ourselves definitely yeah. positive representation yes, yes. <laughs> like sometimes like she was saying about the bad hair that is a mm. thing because we look at that being like that as bad hair so mm -hmm. somebody can say bad hair you know, like when you see black women and they have their natural hair and it's not slick back or whatever, but it's styled or however you have it and it looks good, anybody will say, that looks good, I like that. But when it's unkept, and you know it's unkept, that makes room for negative representation. And so when people see that, they're like, oh wow, you know, I don't want my hair to look like that, you know. And so you feel, well, that's how my hair looks, natural like a fro. That can be considered bad hair. And so you like, well, that's how my hair looks when it's natural, so I got bad hair, you know. So when it's like positive representation, like you see it and everybody's for it, nobody's talking down on, well, this is, you know, and it's like you will feel better. And so like she was saying, when you see women that can do their hair like that and walk out the house and they break it down and you see that, that's what makes you want to say, hey, you know, my hair is just as good. My hair looks good, too. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's going to be important for our future generations, like the younger, our teens and sixth grade, first grade, all the younger. We need to show up so that they can feel like they can show up mm -hmm. like we, you know, as women and we, we need to show up so our younger nieces, nephews, family, whatever, people that just see you because a lot of times people are admiring you, you don't even know it. Like mm -hmm. there's a there's a big thing. I had a I my granddaughter's a teenager and I take pictures of all my clients. So I had a picture of Carly in my phone. She's like, Oh my God, that's Miss Lee. I told her I said you're a superstar over there. <laughs> so it's nice yeah. to like see yourself in those yes. places. Yes. It's mm -hmm. really nice to yes. see yourself. So it's important for our kids. Yeah. It's definitely important for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did I leave off anything that you all want to add on just about the topic in general of like our hair and uh, it just being um, important to us and a big part of our culture and our history? Anything else that y'all want to say? Love it. Because that's what <laughs> makes us different from everybody else. First scene, like when you see someone, that's the first thing. So like I told Mr. Terrell earlier, is their hair. And so when we see each other, that's how we also kind of base how we interact by what's going on. So it's like just 
embrace it and just love it because it's like I mean it's yours and so why wouldn't you want to and then you got people like Miss Terrell girl <laughs> curls be popping shut up girl walk up out the door I'm serious <laughs> I told her earlier I the, when I came here I think it was like how long ago was that I can't remember but like I don't know. my hair was like the curls I've seen my hair curly but the curls were curling and I've never I can't I told her earlier, I was like I had I can't redo that like I try it looks good but I can't, and so I feel like having that experience for the first time, like getting a fresh, you know, set, you know, whatever, you just feel like a new person, you know, and so when you have that experience and it's your real hair, undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah. else y'all want to say? Anything else anybody wants to say or anything? No? No? Okay. Think of anything. Yes. We said a bunch. No, y'all. <laughs> it was good. I think we're good. Thank y'all so much. Thank you.